the chairman of our Board of Education, to the members of the board, to our superintendent, to the principal, to all of the staff, teachers, administrators for the Atlanta public school system, especially to the class of 2011. <laughs> to be here and lastly let me pay tribute to Dr. and Mrs. Joseph Lowry because they come as a powerful and phenomenal team and like unlike that guy you were sitting up here talking about you've had a phenomenal wife God has blessed you mightily over these years for this amazing partner in Mrs. Lowry smart man. You chose wisely. You married up. <laughs> I want to say and begin by really paying tribute to you, Dr. Larry, today. Um, you can't lead, and I want you young people to hear this, you can't lead where you aren't willing to go. Dr. Lowry has led by his bold, courageous, passionate, tenacious example tenacious example. He has been out here on the front line of the battlefield. And as we saw him so eloquently pray the benediction of our inauguration of our new president, let me tell you, he's been praying for us for a long, long, long time. And so on the occasion of what will be your 89th birthday on Wednesday, I come to thank you, Reverend Lowry, for having been steadfast, for having kept the faith, for having stayed the course, having run this race with dignity and determination for which we are all the beneficiaries. We salute you, I love you, and I celebrate you. Thank you. So I got to move, you know, I just, I just can't stand here at the podium. So I've got to be able to move, but while we're getting the mic, let me tell you, you young people are out wonderfully outstanding, aren't they? I mean, we got to celebrate our young people, from the ones who are on the program, for the young people, for the introduction. I have heard the national anthem a lot of places, and I have been all over this country, but rarely have I heard it as eloquently and fabulous and forceful as you all did it this morning. I mean, y'all, y'all are bad. And this jazz quartet, I don't know how you know about being in love, honey, but you were singing like you knew something there. <laughs> all right, well, while we're waiting for the mic, I will not, I will not linger any longer. Um, I apologize in advance. I'm gonna have to leave after our panel discussion today. Uh, I am on a book tour for my new book, rearrange some things because it was important to me that I be here this morning. I am not, you know me well, I am not going to sit here and do one of these, one of these uh, climb every mountain, board to every stream kind of speeches. That's not what I'm going to do today. I'm going to keep it real. This is a conversation, understood? For which I need you to participate. And so the topic is simple. I dare you. I dare you to bring your A game to the table. I dare you, I double dare you, I double dog dare you to bring your A game to the table, to the community table. If we're gonna talk about civil engagement, Dr. Lowry, we can't do our best for the community unless we come prepared. And to do our best, we have to bring our a game. A -game. I what? A -game. All right, and so I want to begin by telling you. Is this my work? Yeah, okay. I want to begin by telling you the story. I'm going to tell you two stories this morning. They've given me 15 minutes, so I got a lot to squeeze into a short time. I want to begin by telling you about Nigel. Nigel was 16 years old, had been in more trouble than you can imagine was running a prostitute
prostitution ring out of a local motel, was running a huge drug ring, he would wait purposely, Dr. Hall, until he knew that the old people in the community were getting their social security checks, and he would wait and mug them and take the money that they had with no remorse. And so he ended up in my courtroom. Some of you may have seen him on the show. And, and I was outraged by his behavior. Outraged. How could you be pumping this poison into our community? How could you be stealing from the elderly in our community? How could you be prostituting these women in the community? And he said, well, what is a young black man supposed to do to make money? And I came off that bench, and we had to cut that part out. <laughs> And so I thought maybe if he understood how great his past was, Mr. Mayor, that he might be, be so inclined to throw away his future. And so I had him spend time over to the Martin Luther King Center, and I called Dr. C.T. Vivian over to spend time with him and showed him that clip where Dr. Vivian had that famous black and white footage where he'd been beat, beat brutally on the steps of the courthouse where he'd been trying to just register to vote. And then Dr. Vivian turned to him, to Nigel, with tears in his eyes, and he said, I took that beating so you wouldn't have to. And now I wonder, after Judge Hatton has told me how you've been prostituting our women, how you've been selling drugs to our young people, and how you've been stealing from the elderly, I wonder if taking that beating was worth it. And so Nigel looked at him, and you could kind of see that, that change come over him. And Nigel looked at him and got full and said, I just didn't understand. Too many of our young people, Dr. Lowry, need to be reminded, and so I'm so grateful to you and the Atlanta Public School System for having this series where they get to hear from you every year. Because if we truly understood how great and how rich our heritage is, and I don't mean just for African Americans, I mean for every culture, every race in this city, if we understood how great our history is, we wouldn't be so inclined to throw away our future. So I double dead. I double, double dead to bring your A game to the table. And when I say to the table, I'm talking about the community table, where we all must gather to figure out how we move to higher ground, because either we do it together or we're going to drown collectively. We've got to move to higher ground. And so my challenge for every member of the class of 2011 today is that I want you to reach and touch somebody else 